the Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1 AM 1170. What are you laughing at, giggles? And I'm trying to the answer. I was talking. The, the, the answer. Hey, when was the last time you had a tune-up? Not for your car, for oh. your air conditioner. That makes more sense. Well, if you want to avoid expensive repair bills, make sure you get regular maintenance for your AC. That's why we should call Straight Shooter Heating and Cooling. You get one-hour appointment windows, no diagnostic fees, no dispatch fees, just straight-up, honest service you can trust. Call Straight Shooter Heating and Cooling today at 619-922-3937, and you'll get for $17.76 an AC tune-up. No bull, just cool. Or book online at Straight Shooter AC. That's Straight Shooter AC. Straight Shooter is awesome, by the way. Uh, that 70, 1776 deal is just for Gun Owners Radio, folks. That's how dedicated they are. So please take advantage of it. So, uh, all right. Okay, so our guest here today is... As you look him up. Yeah, did we switch this around? Yeah, I was just noticing Dave mixed something up. Someone got switched. I just yeah. Have, yeah. No, I just... Blame it on commercials. Dave. I know you. <laughs> is your mic on? Vincent, <laughs> There we go. Okay, get right up on the mic. All right, now let's start the segment. Okay, welcome. <laughs> and we did so good with the first segment. I have no. That's what happens, I'm telling you. It's all the good. I'm going to start practicing. Yeah, you used up all the good. Uh, my my good buddy uh, and friend and uh, San Diego County Gun Owners board member and tabletop champion and all-around good guy uh, and veteran, right? Yeah, we could go there. Yeah, as uh, John Baldwin. Thank you so much for... Uh, for joining us. Yeah, get Thank right you. up on that mic. I'm on it. So you're doing something really cool for San Diego County Gun Owners. First, talk about, well, let's talk about, okay, so what, 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 do you got, what do you got planned for San Diego County Gun Owners? Well, with the great work of Gun Owners Radio and San Diego County Gun Owners, including those tabletops, we've been able to bring the gun show back to San Diego. So, yeah. yeah awesome. Perhaps. So why not mire that up with a radio uh, class? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think we could probably use a radio class around here. Why well, could we? we? <laughs> but not just any old radio. What kind of radio are we talking well, the questions I usually get when I get uh, I get it, I get these questions about radio is well, you know I got this ham radio, uh, it's in my bag, it's in my preps, and uh, you know I think I'm good to go there, and uh, you know it's further from the truth than I think most people realize uh, when you're when you're actually trying to understand how to use these things. Mm-hmm. And so I put this topic or I put this class together a couple years ago based on sort of the the, the questions I'd get or the because I'm a new ham myself. I started. 2020 uh, started my ham journey into understanding it myself, and it's been a, it's been a quick journey. So from just the four years to now, um, I've been able to get my general ham license. So I'm I'm actually operating on HF and stuff like that. So getting into digital and things uh, that connect me with folks all the way out into North Carolina, Arizona, you know, and and some interesting things in that realm. So so I want to I want to get into like I want to talk about the specifics because there's a bunch of lingo you just used and yeah. nobody knows what that means. I don't know what it means. <laughs> So I want to get into that, but before I do, what what is the? I've always kind of wondered, what's the purpose of him? You know, why 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 would people use it? You know, why not why not just use your cell phone? Or, yeah, you know what I mean. Question. Like, what why do people use him? Why does ham exist? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, it's, uh, radio itself's been around for more than a hundred years, and a lot of the technology we got uh, that are still being used today comes out of you know World War II era technology, um, and so. What I put, what I looked at when I wanted to dive into this topic a little further is, you know, how do I become more self-sufficient when it comes to information? And so I looked at, you know, what are the capabilities that exist now, and I and, and sort of diving back into my background in intelligence and putting together products based off raw data and in, resource information that way. Um, I wanted to give myself a capability that allowed me to not only plug in with my community. But I can plug in at the county level, and I can reach a strategic level nationally with, you know, sort of reaching out with ham HF radio technology, and um, that's that's where I approached it from. And I, I realized there was a a niche out there, and people were really in, in this day and age with uh, information, you know, not being able to get it, you know, in terms of you know censorship or misinformation or whatever, or what have you. Being able to get your own information is something I looked at as being key to, you know, building capability and and why that mattered into. Not only the gun community, but also like the the community <laughs> at large. And so how are you get how are you getting information? You know what I mean? Like where's the information coming? Is it like a is it like CB or is it like AM FM radio or like what's what's kind of the comparison and where's the information the independent information coming? Well, from? Let's go yeah. back even farther. Okay, what is a ham operator? What 
What is a ham operator? So a ham operator is basically someone who's gone to the ARRL, the Amateur Radio Relay League, for testing and getting into a license category. So okay. Get, get on the air and broadcast on a segment of bands that exist. Bands are these frequencies that exist out in the electromagnetic spectrum. Mm-hmm. So uh, without getting too far deep into radio propagation theory, uh, basically generating a frequency that can communicate, be received on a, another transceiver somewhere else. Around the world. Around the world, around the community, around the county. And when you get on a certain station, you, you know who's on that other end, right? Well, that's why we have the FCC now, and the license uh, structure is... We, we, so here's how it works. So you want to get into ham radio. You want to understand where I go. So you, you definitely want to visit www.arrl.org, and you can look at where you can take a test near you. And then you can go get in your basic ham technician's level license, and that's going to get you in the game. That's going to get you through the door and being able to communicate through your, your little $25 radio and you can communicate to anybody else who's registered through the FCC website and hence gain that same license. And this used to be very, very popular back in the day. Yeah, very it popular. It kind of went away. It's not CBs, which is in the breaker, breaker, you know, <laughs> yeah. hammer down truck driver. Right. This so, is a, comp- I think it was really designed during the war for communication. That's where we saw it hit its heyday, right? So right. We, and there's still amateur radio uh, old guys, folks out there that still do Morse code, right. that still do you know all that continuous wave. Uh, and all that stuff we were doing in World War II, it's, it's and really prevalent in Europe, too, uh, when it comes to that that sort of, I guess, radio presence. But you're absolutely right with the, the way it's sort of died off, but now we're kind of seeing it come back. In well, because it's clean communication. Clean communication. So Is that a good way of prom- promoting it? <laughs> I, I don't know. And the only reason I say clean, dirty information. <laughs> well, when I say clean, is that you don't have people coming in and censoring you. You don't have oh, people. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's clean. So if you decide you're going to broadcast, yeah, then no one can come in and cut you off or turn you off or you know unless you break FCC rules. No, but I like I, I like what you're heading at with that, and that's that's sort of what I'm driving at with this this course in general is. I want to take somebody who has no idea of what ham is or any idea of what the technology involves and be able to give them some, some basic skill levels that can take, take them from a, a radio that sits in their bag to being able to listen in on the local weather at least, mm-hmm. uh, showing them that you can actually download satellite imagery with radio tones mm-hmm. and actually have that you know translated in some imagery. So you and without spending $10,000. Yeah, very low. Uh, in, I didn't know that. You, you, can, you can transfer. Trans- Tra- uh, transfer right. images using ham. Yeah, so the, I didn't know that. Is that new? Is that relatively new? No, it's no. It's been I doing that for a while. We've been doing it for a while. Um, in fact, a lot of the stuff you see on your news, you know, weather stations is coming from satellites that goes sure. to our geospatial sure. orbiting satellite, uh, and you collect that basically off you know software defined radios, and you can have that transcribed through a computer screen and show the imagery, but no more so, not just generally the imagery, but also the data that comes from that. You get infrared technology or infrared data from that. You can get uh, all the same stuff you're seeing on the on the news stations that you can get with a little forty dollar mm-hmm. USB thing you plug in a laptop from Radio Shack. It. Yeah, basically going back to Radio Shack days, right? But I like I, I don't think they ex- they don't exist anymore. Well, yeah, there's one right down the street. Seriously? No, I'm only kidding. I was gonna say <laughs> still Radio Shack. I just saw something that you could be a general manager for Radio <laughs> Shack and nobody would ever. Yeah, know. nobody would ever know. Nobody, nobody would ever know. Yeah, from '94 to 2005, <laughs> and it's it truly a regional community. Man. Is the ham radio is a, yeah, we're talking a about community. a community of folks, and uh, you know, we're, what I see, what I see happening now with ham radio is we're getting away from sort of what you when you hear the word ham radio, you think of a guy with a ton of stuff in his in his closet or his truck or something, great big tons machine. of antennas, yeah. and what I'm seeing kind of break away from is is less of that and and more. Uh, capability in in uh, an austere way like you can basically take a solar battery or a solar panel with a battery and be able to talk to somebody in europe out in the middle of the desert right. somewhere right um and more so you know you got you got you know the technology with tablets that has evolved today uh the you know with like i said with a software defined radio dongle you can basically turn any inexpensive tablet into a police scanner and actually see activity pop up on, mm-hmm. our wa- on the waterfall. So what I wanted to do with the class in general is just basically sh- expose people to uh, what it is today 
and take them from a, a person that has a radio in their bag to somebody that can actually use a radio in an emergency uh, with very simple, affordable tools and, and technology that exists today that doesn't really require thousands and thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. You can certainly spend a thousand, thousands and thousands oh, of yeah. dollars. But, uh, you know, if you just want to be a guy that wants to know what's going around in the community and kind of have, you know, you be a resource for the community, uh, it's really not that hard to do. Or a backup for your family. Let's say they're, they live across the United States yeah. and you can't rely on cell service, you can always rely on, on ham. Yeah. And even if you're not in an area where cell is unreliable, think about when there's big, you know, like think 9-11, right? The, 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 right? That system just gets so overloaded, everything becomes useless. you right? got to remember, I just watched Red Dawn, so it's going <laughs> to take a while. About time. Me. Yeah, but about this, time. this is like perfect Imagine timing. if they had ham. Is, are, there, is, are there commercial limitations? Like, um, could, could you just set up like the John Baldwin show on ham radio? So okay, so what you're talking about, like the old pirate radio, uh, yeah. where you're broadcasting illegal. So there are limitations with the with the radio bands, and just so uh, clearing up a misconception too about what uh, the ham license structure is is it's a self policing um, institution. We we don't have agents that are out there to knock on your door. The FCC is not going to send agents to come knock on your door for illegally transmitting on a Bofang UV5R, for instance. Right. Uh, what is that? It's a small, inexpensive Chinese radio gotcha. that's uh, okay. ubiquitous in today's society as being considered a ham radio. Uh, so I, I've geared this, tor this course topic towards that particular radio because I feel like there's so much of the radio that's out there, and a lot of people just don't understand the functions of the radio itself. Um, but what was I saying? Uh, yeah, commercial. So you, oh, you, commercial you just set up. Can you just sit there? You know, every every Monday through Friday at five o'clock, put on a one hour show on ham radio. Is that? Are, or am I missing something huge? Here? There are. So there are limitations, but there are there are there is a niche thing out there. Even with TV, you have mm -hmm. folks out there that are broadcasting old sh you know shows on. Just like how you'd see the the old um, what was it not the Wayne's World? Was it Wayne's World? I guess when they were broadcasting on uh, PBS or something late at yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. There's still stuff out there. Public there. access. Public access. Thank you. There's still there's still hobbyists out there that are trying to do that. But I'll state that there are limitations on the on the licensing structure itself. So, if, say for instance, you have a hand technician's license, which is the very basic bare minimum requirement to actually use a ham radio frequency. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got certain limitations on the amount of wattage you can you well can i think what he's going down is if he wants to if you want to do the baldwin show yeah. every monday at five o'clock yeah. for an hour can you do it there certainly with thousands and thousands of dollars you probably could still but yeah I, uh, there are still hobbyists out there to do this do let's yeah. talk about I don't, yeah i'm still i'm still a little so i want to know a lot more details like how like what are the thousands of dollars go towards yeah. do they have are they channels Cause, cause he is you know always I mean? wanted to be a ham <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take a break. This is Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170, and the ham and cheese will be back shortly. Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170, the answer. Hey, if the idea of Kamala issuing an executive order for gun control makes you mad, you need to go to gun prom. Gun Prom is the ounce of prevention in the fight for the Second Amendment. Lawsuits are critical, but they take a million dollars and decide and decades to fix bad gun control laws. Instead, let's create a future where gun control laws never get passed. Going to Gun Prom helps get more pro-gun local officials elected so bad guns control laws never get passed. So bad laws never get passed. So go to GunProm.com now and get your tickets. Okay, so we just want to kind of go back, yeah, and kind of do a wrap because I could I have a sneaky feeling being a ham operator could go for another hour. Oh, we could, yeah, yeah. so much. To well, we're going to talk through this whole segment here, and we're going to we're going to answer some of the questions in this segment on ham, and then we're going to wrap up, find out exactly how people take the class. Can anybody be a ham operator? So, or uh, only if you're if you're not kosher. Or ham, <laughs> ham. So I want I want to kind of cover uh, a lot of a, a lot of information real quickly. Um, I want I want folks to consider like what ham radio frequencies are in a way that will make a little bit more sense as to what you can and can't do with these things. Okay. So first off, um, the think of it like a freeway. All right, you got a fast lane, a slow lane, you know, and then the middle somewhere in between. So gotcha. if you in this case you have to have a license to go in this lane and that lane and that lane. 
Uh, and that's kind of how you can generally pers- look at how like the ham radio bands work. And what I'm talking about with bands is a set of frequencies in a range um, that folks can use to pass information, to communicate with their voice, or to run television shows uh, that some hobbyists are still out there uh, doing. So with those certain frequencies, though, it's going to require a lot more power, a lot more equipment, and a lot larger antennas because uh, to understand how that stuff works, you kind of need the basic concept of how, what a wavelength is. So wavelengths can grow very large. Um, you know, to reach across the world, you're going to need something and it's like 20 meters long in terms of a wavelength. So what, you know, what that means is you needed a very large antenna. So very that's large. why we see these very large antennas that are out there with these high powered BHF radio stations, for instance, um, they're using a lot of power to transmit mm-hmm. that signal. So, um, so why we regulate that is, uh, there's a lot of bands that are designated for different things. We got first responders, we got police bands, we got a lot of, a lot of designated bands for, for, for certain, certain activities. And so that's how we we sort of police and regulate the the ham radio uh, band plan is what it's called. Uh, and so to get, to to basically go back though to get into the game to to get on that freeway, the very bare minimum right now is a ham technician's license, which is a thirty five question test. You can find that simply by googling arrl.org to find a test location near you, and you can simply study. Uh, uh, it's a test bank of 430 questions. You, I've mm. known people that can just go in there and memorize the entire test bank and go in and take 35, que- you know, take the 35 question test and, and and ace it. And it's just like rules and regs. If rules you're going to be a regs. ham operator, yep. understanding uh, things Common I'm talking sense. about now. Common, Common sense. sense. Um, you know, and uh, I'd like to dispel a myth about the the emergency use of ham radio. So I get the question all the time. I'm just going to use, or not really a question. They just tell me that they're going to use their ham radio. When it's an emergency, why do I even bother with getting a license? Well, first, you're not because uh, generally there's, like we talked about earlier, there's designated frequencies for emergencies and first responders. So if you're using frequencies, you're tying up those bands, you're tying up those frequencies, and you're generally causing interference. And FCC will come get you. Just <laughs> it's not even simple. the FCC. It's your neighbor or it's your buddy Bob You know that are really hopped up to go do that because there's a other group of hobbyists out there that love to do that. They'll go find you if you're transmitting illegally or in an area. There's folks out there that make it their life's journey to go find you. Right. Jeez. Um, yeah. It's like the wild, wild west. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, in a way. Kind of, yeah. So, Which is not a not – a, it's kind of cool, right? It is kind of cool. And I like <laughs> it because, first of all, just as Dave talked about earlier, we're clean information, right? So what I saw going down in 2020, like most of us saw, was a huge issue with information. Um, you know, what it came to, to the type of information I'm allowed to see – to the type of information I can get. And I wanted to be self-sufficient with information. And so not this, with this. And exactly. We're, and believe it or not, this is a ham radio. Mm-hmm. It's very, it's, it's like with five channels, though, except we pay 100 or something more dollars a month to, right. to use it. So Because the technology is similar. The technology is similar. All we're, do, we're doing the same very thing with uh, you know very high frequencies or ultra high frequencies to carry a lot of data. Mm-hmm. And those data are decrypted with you know, magic unicorns, but basically mm-hmm. t- bells and tones. The telephone, what a one and zero looks like, and ones and zeros, of course, give us binary code, and commuting goes from there. And off we go. And off we go. So I wanted to go, and like I said, a lot of this probably stems back from my intelligence background of being able to take raw data and raw source information and put that together in a in a meaningful way that I can dispel what information is true or not true for my own set of eyes. For instance, uh, anybody with a weather station can go track their own weather. You know, and see for themselves is the temperature rising. You know, like becoming our own scientist is kind of what I was driving at with with like ham radio technology. So I, I learned a lot about ham really quickly to get to that point of being able to get information for myself. Mm-hmm. So, so you talk about 2020, which was COVID, right? COVID. So what what like what was happening? You, John Baldwin, you're sitting in front of your ham radio, and what like what's coming over the radio that's helping you get better, clearer, more information. You know what I mean? Like is there other people in other areas who are saying, hey, here's what's going on in my neighborhood. Or like, Yeah, I guess you could say that. So we saw a lot of cities that were, you know, Twitter, for instance, was being censored a lot during that time where uh, people were reporting. This actually goes back to the, like when you were looking at the Arab Spring in the early, two, you know, 2010s and in and, and that era, we were seeing Twitter being used as an instru- or a information resource coming out of these countries. So I saw the value of information from a like a decentralized way and getting getting the message out was really important for that. Um, but then, are people you're saying so? Are people talking to you directly, or are you listening in on conversations and broadcasts? So or both. So let me take it to where I'm at right now. So where I'm at right now is I have you know there's 
digital uh, applications you can use with ham radio bands, and you can in generally make what you, I would consider a, a a more raw Twitter, which is you know getting a keyboard message out to another keyboard somewhere out there mm. and passing information that way. So that way, let's say the grid goes down and everything's down. Well, I know I can still tie this thing into a, a battery somewhere in the middle of the desert with a solar panel, and I can still get a message out on my little ham radio. Wow. Um, and somebody else on the other side of the planet or in New York or in Washington can get that message and I can get their message back. So I saw that as a very valuable tool in today's day and age where information is so um, filtered uh, or or just, yeah, I, I'll leave it at that. Where you know Information in today's day and age is a little bit more weird than it used to be, I think. Wasn't it on, uh, what was that remake that Will Smith was in, End of the World? Uh, he it was the oh, Omega Man, but they, they, I am Legend. Yeah, Legend? I am Legend. Yeah. Didn't he? Wasn't he using ham radio? And that wasn't he like broadcasting with ham or something like that? Or? You know, it's, it's so yeah. Shortwave radio, and believe it or not, shortwave radio, you know, still out there. Still radio talk show hosts out there doing shortwave broadcasts, and you know, that's again going back to mm -hmm. the the old World War II era technology and people using tubes to get messages out. So it's still a a, a reflection of that. But what we've done today is we've, we're taking that the concept and we're applying new digi digital tools to that and new you know computing technology and it enhances it. And we yeah we can effectively make what I consider like a very raw Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and if Twitter goes down, for instance, or if the whatever goes down, you know you have you some have backup, backup means of getting information. Well, this is where I said if you had a family that lived in Maine, New York, Colorado, Denver, and San Diego. Right. If you guys were all ham operators, it doesn't make a difference what happens. As long as you have power, solar panel, you can either type or you can speak. Right. And that's... Because what you do is you go, hey, this is... I think you have a call number you have to use. You know, I'm looking for... And you just blast it out there. Yeah. And if the person on the other end is listening, yeah. they can respond. Yeah. And that's the other thing, too, is uh, a lot of folks want to know how they can reach grandma in an emergency. Right. And if I got this radio and I give grandma the radio, right. is she going to be good to go? And showed her how to use it. I mean, effectively, you can if you're in the same neighborhood. Um, but when we're talking about, like, regional communication, um, that's where we're talking about the equipment gets a little bit more expensive and the power. So if it's cross-country, then somebody, all of you are going to have to spend a little bit of money. Well, Yes and no, and this is kind of where I, I want to. This is why the class I'm doing is important because I want to. Yeah, let's people. talk about the class. So, it yeah. and, it, and it sounds like there are uses both daily and big emergencies, or whatever. But talk about the class. Yeah. So the class I designed was is basically kind of showing folks capability. What can I, John Baldwin, do in San Diego with a little twenty-five dollar radio? Right. And we can do very interesting things with a twenty-five dollar radio. Mm -hmm. Okay. So say I want to be a little bit more. I want to be more effective at a regional level. I want to have uh, a little bit more aperture in, this, in the region of Southern California. Okay. Well, I can do that with a little bit more power and a little bit more uh, skill set. And then if I want to communicate strategically, there's a lot of things. You know, um, I, uh, getting back to kind of the old use of ham and, and, and the intelligence connection is. We call this thing indications and warning. You know, you hear that word a lot. Like, I'm getting indications and warning of activity. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I'm I'm looking at with um, exposing folks to what radio is, is access to the things that are available now, even without a radio. But using a radio, you can you can get indications and warning of certain things out there. I and mean, we still have the Air Force's uh, high-frequency global communication service that broadcasts emergency action messages. <laughs> That's a lot to say. But what that and, is? But then your in your class is going to teach this. Like, I'll like show them everything. basically, people who have zero experience with ham, yep. and they're not obligated. Maybe they never. Maybe they decide they never want to go any further with ham. Yep. But you're going to kind of. This is like the very basics yep. of hey, everything you wanted to know uh, from a on a total layman basis. Yep. And how long a class would this so be? So we're looking at 50 minutes, and within that 50 minutes, I plan to do exactly what Mike's talking about here, is exposing them to what they can do now. Sometimes they may they may walk out going, I don't even need a ham license. And that's what I want to I want to show folks is whether you want to get into ham, the hobby, or if you want to get into information collection for your own means, um, you may not even need a ham license radio to do that. Sometimes it's as simple as buying a $30 dongle, if they call it a dongle, on Amazon and plugging that into a tablet, and you're up and running. Right. And Because you, you're not broadcasting, you're not transmitting, you're just simply using it to collect information. Mm -hmm. So like intro intro to the to the, the, the concept, and then to kind of let people feel out where they want to go with it. Exactly. Okay. If you want to go down and do hobby TV, or if you want to go do Morse code, there's a world out there of radio for you. 
Um, but what I'm trying to get at with this particular course is sort of centered on the disaster-minded folks or the prepper, we call it, minded folks who, right. who want to have some means. Well, that's where I thought this is where yeah. you were going in, right. the, in the long run. Yeah, so we can set up a, a, a like, say, for instance, you want to have a neighborhood. In your neighborhood, you want to have a meshtastic node set up with house to house. Yeah, get, all the, get the neighbors all together. Get and, the neighbors together right. so that way when the power goes out, you guys can still talk about, you know, is Harry okay up there? I know they right. did some. That, you know, medication, they got diabetes and things, so we want to get insulin up there. So and, it's, you know. and it's limited seating, right? Yeah. Uh, we got How do they get minutes. a hold of you? So they get a hold of me either by going to gunownersradio.com yep. and signing up to go to the gun show. Uh, on the 7th, they're going to be doing 50 minutes of radio, and that's where you're going to learn everything we talked about today to show you how you can be your own information collection resource. Yeah, you're teaching on... Saturday, September 7th at 3 p.m. That's right. Yeah. Awesome, John. Come stop by, come hang out. At the gun show. Support Gun Owners Radio. Sounds like a plan. All right, this is... Gun Owners Radio, FM 961 AM 1170. The Answer.